AI is watching everything, not just your shopping habits or social media. It's tracking every tiger left on earth, monitoring illegal fishing from space, and even predicting what snacks you'll crave tomorrow. But here's the twist. This surveillance might just be the key to saving our planet. I'm Theodore, and what I'm about to share will change how you see AI forever. Hey there, curious minds, Theodore here, ready to blow your beautiful brains with some mind-bending revelations about AI and sustainability. We're diving deep into how artificial intelligence is becoming Earth's unexpected guardian angel. Our expert is here to help us understand everything from how AI is revolutionizing supply chains to protecting endangered species. And trust me, some of these applications are going to make your jaw drop. Hey everyone, ready for a deep dive. We're tackling AI and sustainability today, and wow, is there a lot to unpack. Yeah. You sent over a ton of cool stuff, research articles, reports, company announcements. Really interesting mix. Yeah, we're going to be exploring how AI is like revolutionizing everything. I mean, from how companies get products to us, to how we protect endangered animals, even to creating energy from some, well, kind of surprising sources. Definitely surprising. Luckily, to help us connect all these dots, we've got uh, our expert here who can uh, break it all down for us. Happy to help. Okay, so let's start with something that uh, I think is going to surprise a lot of people. That ACCA article you sent it said that a crazy 90% of a company's carbon footprint comes from their supply chain. 90%. That's wild. I know, right? It's like all the stuff moving around the world, all those emissions, it just makes you think. It really does. And it puts a lot of pressure on companies to reduce their impact, which is where AI comes in. It has the potential to really change the game. Think about it. Optimizing every step from sourcing materials to manufacturing to delivery, we could be talking about way less waste, fewer emissions, a totally greener way of doing business. But it's not just about like electric cars and stuff. Right. Think of it like an iceberg. The part of a company's carbon footprint we usually see is just the tip. The real chunky stuff is hiding underwater in this massive web of suppliers, manufacturers, and transporters. It's like trying to count calories but forgetting about all the midnight snacks. You're missing the bigger picture. It's about the whole system. Makes sense. Yeah. And companies are already starting to do this, right? Right. I mean, the article mentioned some pretty big names like PepsiCo, Walmart. Oh, yeah. They're definitely on board. PepsiCo, they're using AI to, like, predict what people are going to buy, and then they adjust the production accordingly. Less food waste, less energy wasted, smaller carbon footprint. So it's like AI is predicting what are snack cravings. Haha, uh -huh, kind of. But with the added bonus of helping the planet. I like it. What about Walmart? How are they using AI? Walmart's using it to figure out the most efficient delivery routes for their trucks. So fewer miles driven equals less fuel burned, which means lower emissions. Smart. It's not just about what they're shipping, though, right? Mm. That article also said that AI can be used to, like, check if a company is actually being sustainable in the first place. Yeah. You're thinking of IBM Food Trust. They're using AI and blockchain tech to track ingredients, like literally from their source all the way to, well, your dinner plate. So you can be sure that sustainably sourced coffee you're drinking is legit. Wow. And then there's that whole uh, life cycle analysis thing. Sounds intense. It is, but super important. Companies like ThinkStep and Simapro use AI to analyze every single stage of a product's life. I mean, everything, the raw materials, the manufacturing, how it's used, even how it's disposed of. And yeah. AI can then like pinpoint where a company can make things more eco-friendly. That's really cool. But wait, there's got to be a catch, right? That Supply Chain Brain article mentioned that AI itself, all those algorithms need a ton of energy to run. Oh, absolutely. That's a huge point. You can't just implement AI without thinking about its own environmental impact. It's all about balance, being smart about how we use it, making sure it's powered by clean energy whenever possible, and like constantly monitoring its energy consumption. Okay, so it's got to be responsible AI use. Yeah. Now get ready for this next one. We're talking about AI being used to protect wildlife. Uh -huh. And I'm not just talking about like cute animal videos here. Uh -huh, no, we're talking <laughs> about some serious high tech solutions to some of the toughest conservation challenges. That Saiwa.ai article was full of great examples. Right, hit me with one. Siberian tigers. 
critically endangered, super hard to track using traditional methods, often dangerous too. But the World Wildlife Fund teamed up with Intel to use AI to analyze footage from cameras hidden in the forests. They can track the tiger's movements, estimate how many there are, even predict where poachers might be active. It's like having an AI guardian watching over these amazing animals. Whoa. So AI is basically giving these tigers a fighting chance. It's incredible. Okay, imagine trying to find a cat in your neighborhood. Tough enough, right? Now multiply that by a whole forest, make the cat a massive tiger, and oh yeah, it can eat you. That's what conservationists were dealing with before AI came along. Now it's like having millions of eagle-eyed assistants who never sleep and can't become tiger snacks. Game changer. What else? How about this? Imagine being able to count every single animal in the Serengeti. Wait, really? Yeah. DeepMind, the AI company, they developed a model that can do just that. It analyzes tons of images from cameras and aerial surveys, and the AI can identify and count animals, like with crazy accuracy. Wow, that's impressive. Hmm. But how does it tell all the different animals apart? Like, can it really tell a zebra from a wildebeest? That's the power of machine learning. They train these AI systems on massive data sets of labeled images, so it learns to recognize different species, even in complicated environments. It's like AI animal identification boot camp, but on a superhuman level. That is wild. So AI is basically becoming a wildlife expert. You could say that. Yeah. And it's not just about what it can see. Researchers at Cornell are using AI to analyze elephant sounds mm -hmm. in dense rainforests, too. How do they even do that? They can isolate the elephant calls from all the other jungle noises. Helps them track movement, study behavior in a whole new way. So it's like AI has what super hearing for elephants. This might sound like a silly question, but could this kind of tech work underwater too? Not silly at all. That's <laughs> actually a really great question. And actually, AI is already being used in a lot of cool ways to protect our ocean. Okay, now you've got my attention. Tell me more. So researchers are using AI to analyze underwater recordings. You know, they can identify different whale and dolphin species just by their sounds, their vocalizations. Wow. Yeah, pretty amazing. And it helps track their movements, monitor their populations, even detect things like, uh, you know, noise pollution from ships. So it's like those AI-powered ears for elephants, but for the ocean. Exactly. It's like AI is giving us these superpowers to protect the planet. It really does feel that way. And get this, AI can help us spot illegal fishing activity, but from space. Wait, hold on. From space? How is that even possible? So they use AI to analyze satellite images and ship tracking data, and it can identify these suspicious patterns that suggest illegal fishing is happening. That's crazy. Yeah, it's a big deal for protecting fair populations and, uh, you know, fighting overfishing, which is a huge problem for ocean health. I never would have thought of that. Okay, so we've got AI helping us on land, in the sea. What about the air? Well, AI is also being used to fight climate change. Okay, how so? Well, think yeah. about it. Better weather forecasting, predicting extreme events like hurricanes and wildfires. They even use it to figure out the best places to put wind turbines to generate the most energy. So it's like using AI to harness the power of nature in a smarter way. Exactly. That's incredible. But there have to be challenges, right? I mean, with all these amazing applications, there's got to be some downsides. Oh, there are definitely challenges. One of the biggest is data. You know, we've been talking about all these AI algorithms and they need a ton of data to learn and make accurate predictions. But when it comes to sustainability, sometimes that data is, well, it's hard to get or it's messy or there just isn't enough of it. I can imagine, like trying to gather data on deforestation or, um, you know, pollution in the ocean, it's not easy. Exactly. And it's not just about the amount of data. It has to be good data, accurate, reliable, unbiased. If not, you can get some really misleading results. So how do we solve that? Do we just need to collect more information? Well, that's part of it. But we also need to get better at managing and sharing data. There are some really cool initiatives like the Wildlife Insights platform. They're basically creating this global database where conservation groups can upload and share what they have. That's awesome. Yeah, it makes the data accessible to researchers and anyone developing AI. It's all about collaboration, breaking down those data silos. Makes sense. So 
more data sharing, what other challenges are there? Another big one is computing power. Uh -huh. All these complex AI systems, they take a ton of energy to run, especially training an AI algorithm. It can be really energy intensive, which kind of defeats the purpose if we're trying to be more sustainable, right? Yeah, it's like the AI itself has a carbon footprint. Exactly. It's a real paradox. We got to be careful about where that energy is coming from, prioritize efficiency, find ways to make AI itself more sustainable. Like using those droplet-based generators we talked about earlier. Mm. If we could power AI with renewable energy, that would be a game changer. It would. And that's why those innovations in renewable energy are so important. The more we can move to clean energy sources, the more we can unlock the true potential of AI for sustainability. It feels like we're at such a pivotal moment. We have this incredible technology that can help us solve these huge global problems, but we have to use it carefully. I totally agree. It's about finding that balance, making sure all this amazing tech progress goes hand in hand with protecting the environment and being socially responsible. Right. That reminds me of the On Dana article you sent. They worked with this company to optimize their supply chain with AI, and the result was less emissions A and D, they saved money. Like, win-win. It's a perfect example of how sustainability and making a profit don't have to be at odds. AI can help us achieve both, creating a better future for everyone. So we've got data, the energy footprint of AI. What other challenges are there to watch out for? One more, and it's really important. We need transparency and accountability when it comes to AI. These systems are becoming so complex that we really have to understand how they work, how they're being used, and you know, make sure there's no bias built in. Oh, yeah, that Thomson Reuters Institute article talked about that, right? Yeah. How AI can help with transparency in supply chains, especially when it comes to, like, uncovering hidden risks or unethical practices. Exactly. AI can be this amazing tool for holding companies accountable, making sure their sustainability claims are legit. But we also have to be aware of potential bias in these systems. If the AI is trained on data that's already biased, it can perpetuate those biases, which can have some really negative consequences. So it's about making sure that AI is being used fairly, especially when it comes to something as important as sustainability. Couldn't agree more. We need to constantly question things, evaluate the systems, and make sure they align with our values and goals for a more sustainable future. Okay, so we've talked a lot about the challenges, but what about the opportunities? What are you most excited about when it comes to AI and sustainability? Like, what are the big things you see happening in the next few years? One area that I'm super excited about is precision agriculture. Imagine farmers using AI to use water and fertilizers and pesticides more efficiently. Oh, wow. Yeah, it could mean healthier crops, less impact on the environment, and better food security. That's amazing, especially with the global population growing like it is. We really need solutions like that to feed everyone. Exactly. AI can help us produce more food with less resources. What about renewable energy? I mean, we talked about using renewables to power AI, but can it also help us improve things like solar panels and wind turbines? Definitely. AI can help us figure out the best placement and operation of renewable energy systems. It can predict energy demand, help balance the grid as we transition to cleaner sources. And remember that droplet-based generator we talked about. AI could be crucial for scaling up and actually implementing technologies like that. That's so cool. What about things like tidal power? That oil price article talked about its potential, but also like how hard it is to make it actually work. Yeah. Could AI help with that? For sure. AI can analyze tidal patterns, help design more efficient tidal energy systems, even predict when maintenance is needed. It could make tidal power way more reliable and efficient. It really feels like there's no limit to what AI can do when it comes to sustainability. It's pretty incredible. And we're just getting started as AI keeps getting more sophisticated and we have more data to work with. The possibilities are endless. I have to admit, I'm feeling a little overwhelmed, but in a good way. It's clear that AI has the potential to totally change how we approach sustainability. It's a lot to take in, but that's what makes it so fascinating. We're witnessing this incredible moment where technology and our awareness of the environment are coming together. It could really reshape the world. So in the final part of our deep dive, let's talk about what we can actually DO to make all this potential a reality. We'll explore what individuals can do, what businesses can do, and, uh, you know, the role of governments. We can also dig into the ethical considerations, why global collaboration is so important, and how AI might impact different parts of society. So stick around. The conversation is just getting started. All right, so we've talked about the potential of AI for sustainability and the challenges, but now 
what can we actually do? I mean, how do we make sure all this amazing potential actually happens? It's kind of overwhelming, you know, because it's such a huge issue. Yeah, I get that. But here's the thing. It's not just about, like, governments and big tech companies figuring this out. We all have a role to play. So you're saying individual actions actually make a difference? Absolutely. All those small choices, they add up. Supporting yeah. companies that are doing things the right way, being mindful of your own digital footprint, even just staying informed, it all matters. You know, that reminds me of something in that article from The Hill, the one about um, parachute science. They talked about how researchers sometimes go into communities, collect data, and then leave without really empowering those communities to keep the work going. Oh, that's a great point. We need to make sure AI for sustainability isn't just this top-down thing. It has to be inclusive, benefit everyone. And that's where things like citizen science can be so powerful. Oh, yeah. Like those apps where you can report sightings of, like, endangered animals. Exactly. Platforms like Wildbook, they rely on everyday people contributing data helps researchers track populations, see trends, so people get to be a part of conservation. And scientists get valuable data they might not have otherwise. I love that idea. What if we could do that for other sustainability issues, too? Imagine people all over the world using their phones to monitor air quality in their neighborhoods, you know, tracking deforestation, even mapping out potential spots for renewable energy. That's a really cool idea. It's about thinking big A and D, taking action on the ground. Combining the power of AI with the collective efforts of, well, all of us. That's how real change happens. So individuals can definitely make a difference. What about businesses? I mean, they're the ones developing and using a lot of this AI tech. Right. And they have a big responsibility to do it right. That Thomson Reuters Institute report emphasized how companies need to set clear sustainability goals and then pick the right AI tools to help them get there. So no more greenwashing. Like, they actually have to follow through. Exactly. It's about making sustainability part of how they do business from the ground up. Mm -hmm. And AI can be a huge help with that. We're already seeing companies like SAP using AI to track their environmental impact across their entire supply chain. And we can't forget that doing the right thing can often save money, too. That On Dinner article showed how AI can help companies optimize their logistics, reduce waste, which often leads to lower costs. For sure, sustainability and profitability don't have to be enemies. In fact, they can work together. AI can help companies find these win-win solutions that are good for the planet and their bottom line. So we've got individuals, businesses. What about governments? What's their role in all this? Governments can create the right conditions for responsible AI development. They can fund research, offer incentives for companies to adopt sustainable AI, and uh, set clear ethical guidelines and regulations. Yeah, that World Economic Forum article talked about how important it is to have policies that support both innovation and social equity. We don't want a sustainable future that only benefits some people, right? Exactly. Everyone should have access to the benefits of AI. It should be used to create a more equitable world, not make existing inequalities worse. So it sounds like we need everyone working together, individuals making conscious choices, businesses doing their part, and governments providing support and guidance. It's a complex issue for sure, but it's also a huge opportunity. We have a chance to rethink how we use technology, how we interact with the planet. And who knows what incredible innovations are just around the corner. If we use AI responsibly, we might just solve some of the biggest problems facing humanity. It's a future worth fighting for, and I think we can do it if we work together. Well, that wraps up our deep dive into AI and sustainability. Thank you so much for breaking this all down for us. It's been my pleasure. And to you, our listener, thanks for joining us. We hope this is giving you a new perspective on the power of AI to create a more sustainable world. Keep asking questions, keep learning, and keep making a difference. We'll be back soon with another deep dive. Until then, stay curious. Well, brain builders, we've seen how AI is transforming from a potential threat to humanity's unexpected ally in the fight for sustainability. From predicting our snack cravings to protecting endangered species, it's clear that the same technology that makes us worry about privacy could be our best shot at saving the planet. Keep questioning, keep exploring, and remember, sometimes the scariest solutions turn out to be the most powerful ones. Theodore out. Oh,